clinical placements right so let's start off with what it is for our viewers when you hit sort of year three the year three mark for most universities instead of learning in lecture theatres you sort of get placed directly into the hospitals you're part of the clinical team so working with doctors nurses the consultants and so forth um so mine and abdul's first clinical placement was a cardiology placement in margate and my heart sank bro when i saw it was in margate <laughs> That was like what? Right, South Coast, is it? Yeah, it's like a two, three hour journey from London. Um, no. Yeah, South Coast. East Coast. Is... <laughs> you know, South geography it's, needs work. It's man. this side. No, it's that nah, way. No, it's that way, man. Never eat. Yeah, so Northeast. No. <laughs> Fine. It's, <laughs> it's on the coast, coast somewhere, and there's a really lovely beach called Margate Beach. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, on clinical placements, the consultant first yeah. sees you, gives you a talk, welcomes mm. you, and then sends you into sort of directly onto the wards. Mm. Um, so for the guys entering the clinical years, typically you'd find the most junior doctor, an F1 or an F2, mm. and then you buddy up with them and then make shadow patient them. lists, yeah. shadow them, mm. do any jobs, like take mm. bloods and things like that. Um, what were you doing on the first ward round? Oh, my days before that year. Do you remember we went to the first ward round? So the difference between pre-clinical years and clinical years is pre-clinical years, the vast majority of the time you're in lecture theatres, and you do clinical skills in simulation rooms and clinical mm. centers. Whereas the last three years of medical school, every day you're on the wards. So like Am said, you follow the F1 or the F2, you participate in ward rounds, you learn to examine patients, you learn to take a history. You learn all, basically the last three years teaches you how to become a good mm. junior doctor. And I remember the first time we went in the first day, you don't know what's the norm, what's not. So we all kind of dressed too much. So I remember we were, fully suited and booted and we were smelling like we just came out of club do you remember we sprayed so much perfume on right and we, we didn't know what was supposed to go in it yeah so we came and then and then i remember the doctor he looked and he smelled and there was this four guys all four of us yeah and i remember tom ford yeah, yeah. And all then, of us we were all, all the same but we had one perfume but we all shared it and i remember he, he just smelled it and he's like you guys literally come out of club straight into work it's like you guys are smelling <laughs> way too strong way too good for a hospital environment so like it was like a good learning curve and yeah. you kind of realize what you should and what you shouldn't do so that was clinical skills but or, it was the buzz and excitement yeah we were, we were so excited because so now you excited. feel like a real medical student that's, you know what, that's I mean? what it was and yeah. you get to touch patients examine them get to speak to them and kind of envisage and think oh my days this is what mm -hmm. i've kind of dreamt of this is Starting to become a reality now. I'm going to become a doctor. Exactly. I've just been in a ward run. The first, week, and you have to bear. This is the first time we've ever done a ward run. So yeah. you're excited. You know what I mean? And you're you're hearing all these terms that you've read about for the last two three years. Ex in action. And like, um, we enjoyed it. And to be fair, in hindsight, we pre we went in a lot of the time. We went in on time. We made the most of our so far. No, we, we went in a lot compared to the other guys. Yeah, the so other guys... We used, by the time uh, we got in was the time they woke up. And yeah. that was lunchtime. So we used, to, we used to go home for lunch and then they used to wake up to go in. But the clinical years, I think at the end we can talk about how to make the most of clinical years. But it made me feel like a medical student mm -hmm. and we enjoyed it a lot. And I learned a lot. And yeah. the stuff we learned there to even examine a patient's cardiac system or respiratory system is the same way I examine a patient today, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. That is your bread and butter that's when you first start mm -hmm. learning how to be a doctor. Talking about cardiac exams, do yeah. you remember? Wow. I can hear the bells. Oh my word. So we had this amazing, super smart consultant, right? And as a medical student, you're naturally in awe of people that are really smart. You're in awe of a consultant. And I remember this, this, this consultant, he was very flamboyant. And I'm sure the people that went to Kings would know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. And he used to come in in like a three-piece suit. He's coming in a waistcoat. He he was a very um, he used to drive a flash convertible flash convertible car, and yeah. he's dressed very well, and he's speaking a very certain way. You know, he was a very elegant and a I don't know what the term is, but he's come and he used to come and he was like, you know, I can come into ward, and from the end of the bed, I can tell who's got a murmur diagnose a condition from the ECG and I remember we were like wow and it's like he knew everything <laughs> and in med school people use two books to revise there's the clinical skills book which we call mm -hmm. cheese and onion and then you have the Kumaras and Clubs books it got to the point where we thought he wrote it we thought yeah. this guy wrote the book he was so smart bearing in mind you're as a medical student so you're naturally in all of him and I remember he's like at the end of the bed I can hear, listen to 
who had heart murmur. All the people that are junior doctors now will realize the valve he was talking about was a mechanical valve, and because it's a metal valve, it makes this little clink noise, and anyone can hear it from the end of the bed. Anyone. But at that time, we were like, oh my god, this guy is a super genius. Um, but he was a very good teacher, he taught us a lot. Um, I remember my reaction. So we were sitting, at, we were standing at the end of the bed, mm. and he was standing next to the patient, and mm. he was like, I know this patient mm. has a heart, me- uh, mechanic heart, mechanical heart. Like, mm. What mm. you know, you know this one. Huh? Mm. <laughs> you got a stethoscope in your ears. Mm. Um, anyways, I just remember when he said that we just looked at each other like, whoa, yeah, man, <laughs> how? <laughs> nah, he he had us fooled. This guy had us fooled. <laughs> it was a bit of a showman, yeah. wasn't it? He, he was like, showmanship. But that's quite nice, as in, like, mm. you know, he was a doctor and he took pride in the work he did and he took pride in knowledge and knowing loads of things. I think you would always find doctors that know the weird and wonderful and the very rare disease and the quirky mm-hmm. stuff and that in itself is a sign of like you know someone that's really passionate about medicine and that's what i enjoyed i enjoyed yeah. his teaching because he was a very good teacher and he taught us all this in an entertaining way as yes, well he, yes. the way he taught was not in a very i wouldn't say it was patronizing mm. i wouldn't say it was intimidating he didn't have the the bullying style mm. i thought it was very entertaining yeah showman style yeah it was quite good teaching very, it was very it was nice a very good show. it was it's very good. nice i think to wrap up um it would be nice to kind of because i know we didn't probably give in the last episode three pieces of advice or three golden nuggets um and we can keep a focus on how to make the most of clinical years or how to make the most of clinical placements mm-hmm. um so if i give my three bits i would say number one so i'm going to be give lots of academic advice here i think so um number one what i think you should do is understand the pathology of whatever disease you're studying right don't just learn the signs and symptoms i think the oxford handbook the cheese and onion book was really good for that it just gave signs it gave symptoms it gave causes and it just sort of said straight away Mm. what it is Um, but i found that very difficult because how do you commit that to memory and it just it just takes up a lot of memory space like Mm. that so what i did was i actually studied a different book i did the kamara and clark book first and used just the general internet and I would understand the pathophysiology, so understand why, how diabetes comes about, mm. how a heart attack occurs, what's happening at the sort of vascular level. And when you understand all of that, you're right, you don't need to memorize signs and symptoms. It makes sense why certain things occur. Mm. Um, so I think understand the topic and then move on to learning what, what it sort of manifests as in a patient. So that's number one. Number two, make sure you have a clinical partner, okay? Make sure you have a partner and you both motivate each other. You go in, you have plan Bs, Cs, make sure you're always critiquing each other and you're having fun. That's the Mm. most important thing. Um, And that's number three. So number one and two, essentially work hard. Number three, make sure you play hard. So also just have fun. Um, Learn how to enjoy the ward rounds. Learn how to enjoy going into placement learn how to enjoy when you got time away from the placement um so yeah those three things i think are the most important things um yeah i'd probably echo what you said um me knowing me or people that know me i'll flip it i'll say work hard play hard so enjoy it enjoy your time you're on insta stories telling everyone to watch peaky blinders yeah. after time oh yeah so by the way peaky blinders if there's two things you do on a sunday is watch scrub dinner then watch peaky blinders um, in that order, by the in way, that scrubbed order. in first. Yeah. So I'd say make sure you enjoy time. Make sure you enjoy your time at medical school, at university, clinical placement. Because um, you don't want to kind of leave university having regrets, kind of, because you don't, because F1 and F2 is busy. We know it. We're busy. We just came off a busy mm-hmm. shift. Enjoy it so that when you look back, you're like, you know what? Now it's time for me to work. Let me work, grind. Let me work hard because I did get to enjoy medical school. So enjoy it. But at the same time, make sure you take the time and effort to learn. Mm-hmm. And I would say clinical years are some of the years that kind of define you as a doctor and are years when you can hone in your skills to become a very good junior doctor. Secondly, I would say having a very, having a clinical partner is good. You can encourage and motivate each other and there is a responsibility. So for me, if I was by myself, I know I'd wake up late, I'd have no responsibility, I'll be all over the place. But having that commitment and, you know, if I'm saying let's get in for 9, 9.30, I'll be like, Do you know what, I can't let him down, I need to be in there. And that means I end up learning. Mm. And the third piece of advice I would say is, is, I always come back to this, identify the way you learn. If you're someone that needs to read something before you go to the ward run, or if you're someone that 
before you examine a patient, learn how to examine a patient, examine them, learn and get feedback and then refine it, do that. Find what works for you, find the best way you learn and keep at it. And you can always learn different techniques. Mm. Don't stick to one, don't stick to, I know my learning style is very different to AMS and AMS is very different to mine. It's very easy to be caught up, oh, the vast majority of medical students are revising in this way, they're spending hours on end. Don't, don't you know, be sucked into that. Find your way of learning. And I think the good thing is, is doctors, consultants, they enjoy teaching and they're more than happy to help. So, and at the end of the day, medicine, it doesn't value, knowledge is there, but you are a consultant and a registrar and a senior doctor because of the experience you have. Mm, yeah. And you don't pick that up from a book. So increase the number of patients you are seeing, increase the number of patients you're examining mm-hmm. because a consultant is a consultant and we are a junior because he has seen hundreds of the same cases, hundreds of the same different cases. So use that knowledge, you know, the source of knowledge and use that and expose yourself to as much clinical practice as you can. Yeah. Um, you know, just before we wrap up though, um, I've actually forgotten to say something which is quite important to the transition from preclinical to clinical, mm. um, which is important for anyone who experiences this. So when I sort of came to that transition point, I actually struggled. Mm. That adaptation of going from, I was more of a bookworm, mm. give me a book and I'll eat it for breakfast, mm. right? I'll mem- memorize, be able to memorize every single piece of text from top to bottom. Mm. When I came to the clinical sort of side, I did find it quite challenging. Mm. Like. I know everything about arrhythmias, but mm. when I see it in action, I'm not picking it up. Mm. And it was I was quite disheartened about why am I not able to do that? But I think it goes back to the point you just made about experience, right? Mm. When you see, some, see something repetitively, mm. when you see the arrhythmias, when you see the heart attacks, when you see the pneumonias, right? All of that textbook knowledge then comes to life. Mm. So if you do go into the clinical world and feel a little bit disheartened because you're not able to pick up what everyone is also seamlessly picking up. Again, everyone's different. Um, I think it happens to a lot more of the bookworms, like mm. myself. You go into that environment, it's difficult now to translate all of that. Mm. But I think stick to what your third piece of advice, keep seeing patients, um, ex- and sort of increase your exposure to seeing, sort of examining all of the cases. And with experience, you'll settle in and you'll notice that you, that transition period has been made a lot smoother. Mm. Um, so that's, I think, just to add to your final bit. No, I agree. Um, so I think it's a nice time to wrap up episode seven. Thank you once again for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe.